Hello. I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week and this is the last week of the month of March. I remember the Lord told us in this month that I'll begin to send the rain. Now, let me tell you something. This week, you should expect a miracle. Any miracle that will make your life easy. Any miracle that will make your life comfortable. It doesn't matter where you've been. Trust the Lord for rain. He says, the wilderness will be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be counted for a forest. That's our steam scripture for this week, Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15. Praise God. So God is doing a lot this week. Believe him for it and you will see the glory of God. You know, Jesus said to Mother, if you will believe. He actually said, didn't I tell you that if thou can believe, you shall see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see amazing things happen. Praise God. Are you ready for today? Can we call for that daily bread before we go on? Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread today. It's coming to me in every form that I need it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. As long as you need it, God has it for you. And he's not holding back. Don't ever think God is holding back from blessing you. Don't ever think. See, it's his joy. Jesus said, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So don't think God is holding it back for some selected few. No. He loves to bless everyone. He loves to bless. Praise God. I'll be sharing with us this week on something I've called the wisdom of the word of God. The wisdom of the word of God. And, and we're going to be touching um, a whole lot of things um, this week. But the idea of this series, the idea of this teaching for this week is to begin to align your mind. Because see, the more you relate with believers, the more you begin to realize that a lot of people's minds are shifting from God. They still go to church, they still pray, they still do all those Christian things. You know what I'm talking about. But in truth, their minds are shifting from God. And you see, most times these things happen and people don't realize it. That by the time you realize it, you've gone so far, it's difficult to find your way back. And so, meditating on these things and, and, and talking to the Lord about it, the Lord just dropped this word in my heart to share with you about the wisdom of the Word of God. Why is the Word of God important? Now, if you follow me on this broadcast, you would have heard me say or heard me make a statement like this. That the Bible is not the word of God. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because now I'm saying, we're talking about the wisdom of the, of the word of God. It's so easy for you to say, okay, that means the wisdom of the Bible. See? Now, we're going to be talking a lot about the Bible. We're going to be talking a lot from the Bible. But then, you need to understand the difference between the Bible and the word of God. You need to understand it. Seriously, you need to understand the difference. No, sometimes people think, does it matter? Yes, it matters. It matters. Because you see, as you grow in the things of God, the more you know. And then because of the things you grow to know, the more accountable you become. Now, accountable to who? Not just accountable to, to God, but accountable to yourself, accountable to your destiny. See, now, you, you, you need to know that you're the one who will take your destiny into your hands. Oh, yes, you're the one who will take your destiny in your hands. But then, taking your destiny in your hands simply means becoming deliberate and accountable. What do you do with your time? What do you do with your knowledge? See that now? So, if you're not doing anything about your knowledge, you will not even know that your knowledge is growing. But you see, the more we walk this thing, the more we realize uh, it, this thing is working on this thing, uh, and then we begin to grow 
in these things. See, so one who's dealing with the Bible may not grow, but one who's dealing with the Word of God will surely grow. See, because if you are not seeking, because sometimes, you know, you know, like I said, the more you interact with believers, or people who, who you think are believers, the more you interact with them, the more you begin to have a lot of questions in your heart as to what they really believe. You know, this is a journey, a journey of faith. If it's a journey, then there must be movement. If, it, if there is movement, then there must be distance covered. If there is distance covered, then there must be the focus of that journey. So there must be an end to that journey. It's the same thing with our faith walk. See, it's a journey. And if it's a journey, there is an end. If there is an end, then we must cover distance. And if we're covering distance, we should be able to look back and say, this is where we're coming from. And this is how far we have gone. And truth be told, God gave us all these things, but because we do not understand, so we read our Bible, which every, every Christian does read the Bible, it's important. Every Christian should have a copy of the Bible, not just even Christians, everybody should have a copy of the Bible, praise God. I'm not a Christian, why do I need a copy of the Bible to you? Now, now you're cheating yourself because it gives you some true history. Yeah, the Bible gives you some true history. History of events, history of places, history of things. So it's from the Bible you know that it's God that created the heavens and the earth. It's from the Bible you know that the first man was Adam, except you want to argue all those things. Oh, the first man. Now, you know, sometimes you hear all kinds of things. I'm telling you, you hear all kinds of things. You know, sometimes people are arguing and saying things like, hey, Adam and Eve were not the first people that God created. Now, when they say that, they, they mean there were other people that God had created in the world. So that's where the, the argument of, okay, Cain must have married from one of those people. Now, you see, that's the challenge with a single story, even when it comes to the Bible. That's a challenge with a single story. Now, because the, the writer of the book of Genesis had one focus, and every writer has his focus, is the truth. Every, no matter, you, once, you, once you pick up your pen and it's in your heart to write a book, now the book might be 1,000 pages, but you that is writing that book, you have the message you want to communicate. Now, in communicating that message, different things will come into play. But everything that comes into play will be in one direction to, to push that focus that you have. Now, because that is your focus, there are certain details you will not venture into. You understand what I'm talking about? So, someone is writing a book, for example. He wants to tell how he graduated with first class. So, that's the story he wants to tell. And then he begins to write, and then he writes that, oh, I, I, I went to so-so-and-so school. And then he now says, ah, my competitor in school was one Mr. James, you know, Abari. You understand what I'm saying? And then he only writes about James Abari. Now, someone years later, picking that book and reading without understanding, comes and says, this guy only had one classmate in his school or in his class. His only classmate was James and Barry. So I said, no, how can he have only one class? He's only one classmate. Why do you think he's only one? He's only one classmate he mentioned. See? So it must be, you understand what I'm talking about? Now that's how people argue things. He wasn't writing a book to tell us how many classmates he had. If he was doing that, then we expect him to write all the names of his classmates. But you see, he's writing how he graduated with the first class. And then, in writing that, he had to talk about his class. In talking about his class, the thing that motivated him to, to drive, to go further, was one person in his class who was, you understand? So, that was his focus. So, every writer have his focus. So, the book of Genesis, the writer of the book of Genesis, had his focus also. And because he had his focus, there are certain things he didn't 
um, border going into. But then the writer of the book of Genesis is not the only writer that exists. See, so by the time you you get other books and read and say, ah, I don't bother myself with any book if it's not the Bible, then you're deceiving yourself. I'm saying that truly you're, you're acting like a hypocrite. I remember having this discussion with someone. I said, have you read so-and-so books? Say, ah, no, I've heard of it, but I, I, I don't want to. And I said, why? No, see, I don't want any book to, I don't want to read anything that will confuse my mind. I said, why would it confuse your mind? You see, that's how you know that there are people who have so carried a superstitious, superstitious belief in their minds. So here's the thinking. If I read those books, a spirit might enter me that will confuse me. I said, what's well, book written in black and white? Okay, so you went to school, right? Did you read book on physics? Did you read book on chemistry? Did you read literature books? Did they confuse your mind? No, no, it's different. It's different. So what's the difference inside? See that now? Now, so here is it. For example, when you read books like the book of Joshua, now they give you a more detailed, actually the book of Joshua gives you a more detailed history about, um, about the beginning. See? Yes, it gives a detailed history, a more detailed history than the book of Genesis. It gives, it, it goes further. Now that's because the book of Joshua was just a history material. See, so it was document. Now, whoever, whoever wrote the book of Joshua, I think it's a compilation really, you know, got stories from different angles, see, and put it together. Now the purpose was just history. He's not trying to tell us anything specific. It's just giving us history. There are other books like the book of Jubilee that also gives us such history. Now, when you begin to read, you won't be asking that kind of question that who did Cain marry? <laughs> you won't because it's clear. Now, when you, when you read that, then you come to read the book of Genesis also. Then you're like, it won't be a problem. But then you just read the book of Genesis and now you're arguing. I say, Cain, someone say, oh, Cain married his sister. How can he marry his sister? See, because you are using today's culture to judge. You understand what I'm saying? You're using today's culture to judge. I was listening to an argument recently. Um, they were arguing about um, a statement Paul made in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And I think verse 32 or 35 or there, but where he was talking about um, there was an argument going on. So um, they were talking about Paul saying look, if one is acting uh, funny towards his virgin, they can go ahead and marry. So some say he was saying a father can marry the daughter. Some say he was saying um, a man can go ahead and um, have sex with a sister. And some, you know, different kinds of argument. And, you know, while I was listening to that argument, I said, you see, the problem is difference in culture. If you don't understand the culture, then you will not understand the statement Paul was making. Now, because that's not the culture we practice today. Now, some people still practice that culture. Okay. So what's the culture then? Let me use this to help you. So what's the culture then? The culture was this, that as a man, you can betroth a lady who's this very, very young girl. So maybe you're 20 years old. You can betroth a lady that's 10 years old. See? So... And now she's, she's a minor. Everybody knows she's a minor, but you're betrothed to her. Now, because you're betrothed to her, there's no sexual relationship between the two of you. Okay. But then it's, it's for it now, say, how do you know that Joseph and Mary, Joseph and Mary, they were betrothed. Now, we don't know how long they were betrothed, see, but of course they were not having sexual relationship. 
You understand what I'm saying? Now that's why Joseph, Joseph felt terrible when he learned Mary was pregnant. And he says, ah, ah, I don't want to disgrace you publicly because I respect you, I respect your family, um, but I'm just going to secretly, so we just come up with a story, you know, that um, some things happen, so uh, let me just find my way, see? Now, Joseph was betrothed to Mary. Now, there are, there are people who say, history generally, who said Mary was about 12 years old as at that time. Now, we don't know how long he was betrothed. So it happens that six year old, you know, in some northern, uh, northern areas, they, they still practice this thing. Say, a man will betroth a very small girl. So what's Paul saying there? Say, look, you're betrothed to this girl. And it's fine because of who she is. You guys have a relationship, but no sexual relationship. So he says, when you realize that she's past the flower of her age. What does it mean, the flower of her age? She's crossed 13. She's now a teenager and growing. And he says, and then you realize you're beginning to be feeling that sexual urge towards her. He said, then do the right thing. You don't need to wait until she becomes 18 or 20. He says, go ahead and marry her. So, because he was trying to say, instead of fornicating, get married. Now, that was the argument he was bringing. So he said, if you have, if you're betrothed to a lady, it was their culture. If you're saying that today, people will not understand what you're saying because it's not a culture. See, now it's part of what we're talking about, the wisdom of the word of God, how to understand the Bible, how to understand the mind of God, even when you read the Bible. Are you following me? So now that's what Paul was talking about. And the people in his day understood what he was talking about. But then you carry that whole thing today and you're wondering, what's he talking about? <laughs> Is it that? So if you don't understand that cultural practice, you won't understand what he's talking about because you're trying to read what he wrote then for then people. So today, remove the culture or remove that practice. That scripture has no meaning today. You understand what I'm saying? So, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want to show you something from 1 Peter. Brother Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. Where is my Peter? 1 Peter chapter 2. I'll read from verse 1. Let me read from verse 1 to verse 3. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure, or old King James says, sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now, now understand Paul um, Peter speaking here and he made a statement. He says, hey, as newborn babes, what does it mean newborn babes? Now, if you lack understanding, you be wondering why should Peter be writing to newborn children? Can they read? No. Who was he talking about? Those that just got born again. See? Those that just got born again. So he was addressing them. And he says, look, laying aside. Now, as, as little as this scripture is, we're going to dissect it and bring out some good things inside for you. But notice, I want you to read this scripture personally on your own. This 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 3. I'll read it again and then we close because my time is up. Then we'll continue tomorrow. It says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, it's in your power to lay malice aside. Okay? Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, if you're born again, 
watch this, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. It says, lay it aside. I'm not going to do this again. Why? Because you're in Christ. Now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our time is up. We're going to pick up from this first Peter chapter 2 tomorrow. And please follow me carefully. You don't want to miss anything I have to share with you this week. Praise God. I pray for you right now. May every scale that I've covered your eyes fall off today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the word of God be open to you. That you will be able to see and walk in the truth of it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.